So if you're using React Context inside of your React application, you're definitely doing it the wrong way. In this video, I'm gonna show you why React Context is bad, why the React core team hasn't fixed that already, and how you should approach in order to fix that performance issue. So we have only used React Context before and worked with it and actually created applications with it, but we never thought about this bad approach of Context and what performance issue it kind of creates, especially when your application or React application actually grows. So to better understand that and to better understand what is the actual issue with Context and what is the performance issue particularly, so we all know uh, we used Context before, so that's basically the simple and easy way to use Context. And you probably used it somewhere like this, where you just provide like, for example, theme Context and you get the theme and stuff like that. You can see everything in here in the you know documentation or the React documentation. So let's say we have a little bit more advanced example in here for our application. So this actually our project uses V, it's just a simple React application. Now for the application in here, I've got two approaches, the bad approach, which is using React context and the good approach. So let's start with the bad approach to understand why context is bad for performance and how to avoid that later on with a good approach. So for example, in here, we got a bad application, which simply just uses the context. Now I have actually a folder in here to create context. So I have a bad context. So all they do is use the create context context from React. So of course, this is uh, the standard official like function to create a context and this is actually the official way to create a context. So you create a context in here, you export it. The reason I'm putting it in a single file in here, so like all of my components can later on reuse that context and just access all the data inside of the context. So we have it on top of here. That's pretty cool. And have my bad application here. So as simple as that, we all did like for the context, we defined using state in here, for example, product and cart, and we have like an e-commerce store. Here we're getting products. And for example, in here we're fetching products too. And here inside of our application, we just go ahead and define the actual context. So we do like use state to define, you know, the actual state for products and cards. And we simply do the bad context provider in here. So we just use our product like context. We put the provider in there. We wrap like my whole components that needs access to that particular context. And we provide the value in here through the context. Like the value should be, you know, the products and the set products, like, you know, the actual state and the set of function to update the state later on. And of course it just goes through that and we got, you know, use context in here. So the use context is basically a hook that allows you to return the actual context in every single component without particularly using that through props. Because you know, all we know, because we all know that context, how it works, just passes down the props through components. So we can use this hook in here just to get, you know, the values inside of the context or, you know, the data from the actual context. And we can simply just do the rendering. So we can do it for everything pretty much like products in here, for example, to set the cards, the cart drawer in here to access the cart and product and so much more. All right, awesome. Now to actually check why this one is bad, particularly to check if the actual components are re-rendering when we change something, this is actually what I'm gonna be doing. So for every single component here, what I did, it didn't use effects and it added inside of it a console.log to do, you know, to check if this particular component is being re-rendered or not. So as soon as like one of these components, for example, for the card drama in here, if it re-renders, we can know that by just, you know, seeing the console log in, in the console, in the browser itself to see if that component got re-rendered or not. So we can check if this is performance or if it's triggering unnecessary re-renders on our components. And we're basically doing the same thing for everything. For example, for cards in here, we're doing rendering cards uh, for product list as well. So we're doing like, oh, rendering product list and so much more. Now, before going to the browser and actually test this one, what you need to note in here, so the you know expected behavior of how this should work, for example, in here inside of the product list, since the product list in here only has access to the products and set products, which means it doesn't have access or need access to the card state, that means it only should re-render when the products actually change, right? So like whenever a new product was is added or the set state is called in here and the products actually got changed, this component product list should re-render to render the new products and that's it, right? All right, so if you go inside of the browser right now and try to open cart, as you in here, as soon as I open cart, I get rendering cart drawer, rendering cart, that's expected. Now, the actual ultimate test, what should happen is when you go in here and try to add, so for example, you do add to cart, for example, try to add a new product. So what happens is we're gonna directly go ahead and update the cart, we're gonna add an item inside of the cart, but we're not gonna touch the actual products that are rendered right over here inside of the products list component. So if I add to cart, there you go. So what I see in here, cart drawer being re-rendered, that's cool because I, you know, it has to re-render so it could show us the new cart item being added to the cart drawer in here. Cart be rendered because, you know, it's the parents of that. 
but it still doesn't make that lot of sense. But the thing in here, while we're having products list being re-rendered, product list is just the one that is responsible to re-rendering products. We haven't changed products. There's no need to re-render that. Because if you look back into the product list in here, all it actually has access to or all it needs to re-render is actually just the product. And that's the actual bad issue that context or React context actually gives you when working with the context. And fun fact, for example, in here, if you take a look on the cart in here, which is a component that doesn't have access to like no state, literally only has a local state, it doesn't have access to the context, but it's still being re-rendered regardless. And yes, that's another issue, just like re-renders all the components, all the children inside of the provider of the context. So literally anything you put in here inside of like the provider of the context. So whenever any of the values or any of the objects values in here actually change, this will trigger a re render for the whole children in here, regardless whether it has access to the context. Now, what is the fix for that? And how can we fix that issue for re rendering the whole tree? Because of course, for smaller applications, like for example, the application we have right now, it's very small, that's not going to have a lot of impact. But if your application actually grows a lot with a lot of components, it actually depends on the context and has a lot, a lot of components and GSX to render and stuff like that, you're going to notice a lot of performance issues. So the first one, which so the first solution in here is actually going inside of like the react dev dev documentation here, which is the new documentation for use context, and you scroll down to optimizing re renders. For this one, they have like a guide or like a solution that explains how to do that using use callback in here, like utilizing use callback and use memo. But this isn't actually the best solution to do because you got to do a lot of boilerplate code and sometimes it doesn't work perfectly and it works for edge cases and stuff like that. So it kind of like outbeats the intention of using context in the first place. The second one, which isn't available right now, but React team has an RFC, like has in fact two RFCs in here are sitting down for adding the support for like a context selector to like pre pretty much basically fix this issue in here instead of like the React code base officially from React and to make only context render ones for each component that only depends. So you just like work as expected. But the RFC in here hasn't seen the line in quite a few years since 2019. And there's like a new RFC since 2020 or 2021, which is speculative mode in here, which should like support like create like context selector and everything. But still, it's not fully yet like included in any of release. So it's not fully implemented by the react team, hopefully soon enough. But so if you have like time, you can wait for that. But I don't think it's actually a great idea. And the last and the perfect solution for now is actually using this really awesome library which is called the use context selector. Fortunately enough for us, there's this awesome library and actually comes and actually fixes the context issue and makes us live in the dream world. So this library actually being used by like more than 170,000 people in here, uh, just to fix the context issue in here. And pretty much this one has the same kind of API of how context works by just providing you at two functions that create context and use context selector. And in fact, it just gives you this really magical function, which is called the use context selector, which is a hook that allows to select a specific state and thus fix the multiple re-rendering issue. All right, so let's go ahead and see how you can use that. So for us in here, I have a good context. So bad context using, you know, the regular React context and the good context in here is using the use context selector library. So from this library, I need to import the create context, which is the same function as you would do it in React. You just do call create context. It just gives you a context, same as React. And here you go inside of your application, which is a little bit different. So you go inside of your application in here, you do the state provider, which is you have to create like another kind of like function or components, you can't put that directly. And that component is going to like define the actual provider for you. And it has to define the state inside of that provider. So you can't just take this state and put it inside of here, that actually just going to prevent it and just going to, you know, cause the same issues. So in order to fix that, you have to do it this exact same way, you create another component, you you put all the state in here, you wrap it with a provider, the good app context, and you wrap it with your children. And you simply just go in and provide that new component, like the state provider we created on top in here. And you just kind of wrap all your children in here, it's just going to work perfectly. And as simple as that, you got that one set up. Now, how let's see how you can use that in action. For example, if you access the 
the product list in here. So the bad way, we're just using the use context. Now, the better way using the new library, use context selector from use context selector. So I'm doing in here, use context selector. I'm giving it the actual context and I'm using this selector, which is like a function that returns a particular selector from the context. I remember in here in our value here, we have like products, set products, cards, and set. So it's simply going to return us products. And I also need access to set products so I can do the same. And the same thing happens for the others. For example, for the card drawer in here, I need to go, I commented the bad approach in here, and I'm just using the use context selector, I give it a selector to access the cards, and I give it a selector to access, for example, products because they need products, and it can do the magic later on. Now, if we go back to our website in here, and just basically this, this is actually the good version if you're using the new library in here. And let's go ahead and try to do add to cart. So if I click on add to cart, there you go. So as you see in here, only there is one single component that re-renders, which is the intended way, the intended behavior. So it's doing re-rendering cart drawer because you know it needs to be re-rendered, but nothing else is being re-rendered alongside that. So not the product list, not the actual cart, only the cart drawer that needs re-rendering. Even if you like add multiple ones in here, you go down in here and you add multiple ones and you keep adding only the cart drawer that gets re-rendered. And yes, that library saves it as simple as that for us. Of course, it's not like the super perfect library out there because there's actually some limitations behind the scenes for the library itself provided by the author in here because there's some issues and stuff like that. Because this one literally cannot be you know fixed until React goes in like official and, and fixes that and supports that inside of like the code base inside of React core itself. But for the meantime, we can use this awesome library to fix that issue for us. There's another way actually to check regardless of using console log, which is using like a timestamp in here. So I'm just doing a re-rendering of timestamp using date.now, both on the cart drawer in here and the product list. And if I forever like add a new cart, I'm using here the timestamp in here if you just focus on it and focus on this timestamp. So if I add, this one actually changes frequently. That means it's being re-rendered and the JSX tree is being recreated. But for this one, if you look into it, it's not, it's not being touched. That means the whole component in here is not being re-rendered at all. And if you notice for the bad approach in here, for example, using you know the bad React context in order the evil React context, if you focus on the timestamp again and try to add something, as you can see, both of the timestamps are being changed. That means every single component of that is being re-rendered even though it doesn't need to. Also, there's actually another issue if you intend to use this library, which is the component doesn't redraw, but the component function is still executed. So there's actually an issue inside of the library itself. So inside of the repository of the library, there's this issue and there's actually a really great explanation by the author of how this basically works. So briefly, what you should do is you should put like, for example, any code in here or the console log to check it inside of use effect, because use effect, if it's being called, that means the component is was rewritten. So you shouldn't actually put the console log outside of the use effect and spares of like the author's explanation. This is because they want to like to support concurrent rendering in react version 18. So like, for example, if you want to try that, for example, we go back to my code base in here, I'm using, you know, the library, I'm using like the good approach in here. And let's say I'm going to remove the use effect, just going to put, you know, the rendering product list is straight through in here. Same thing going to be for the cart drawer. So now if you try to actually focus on the console log to see, you know, what now, if we try to basically focus on both sides on the console log to see like what logs are going to be in, and also you're going to focus on the time step in here to check if the time step got really changed. So if you try to add to cart, as we're using here product list and cart drawer, both gets re-rendered in here. But if you look into the time step real quickly on top in here, as we're using the time step is not changing for the product list. That means it's not fully being re-rendered, but the time step for the cart drawer is being re-rendered. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Hope you guys actually enjoyed this controversial kind of conversation between you know the standard react context and this library that fixes it and why react context actually is a bad approach especially when you're using it on a larger application and how you can avoid that so anyway guys catch you hopefully in the next ones